I wake up every morning. Baby, what do I eat in the morning? Hey, what else do I do? And I type on my keyboard, right? Typing on my keyboard. Every morning, this happens 100% of the time. Even this morning. Travel. Every single day. That happens almost without exception. It is a 99.9% .9 correlation. Bacon and eggs did not cause me to type on my keyboard. My keyboard did not cause me to eat bacon and eggs, and none of them caused me to drink coffee. <laughs>
if I don't, if I feel okay, is if you're fine? feeling fine, that's awesome. I would, I know a lot of people that once they kind of get over 30, they're like, oh gee, I've had a really lot of gas this week, or like my stomach feels terrible. But if you're able to tolerate that, well then that's really good. Um, if it fills you up, and it's obviously um, going to be more advantageous if that is helping you stick to your macros. Um, but keep in mind that if you have 50 grams of dietary fiber, you need to times that by two to three calories and you're still getting that amount of energy from that dietary fiber. Okay. Like if we do a 10,000 calorie challenge or something like that, like well, she has to fast for like a week. Yeah, it's week. actually seven <laughs> days, so yeah. no eating. But, <laughs> so she may have to make that up over the next two weeks, but um, yeah. like I would, I would, you know, chop basically 1,300 calories off my um, daily intake for the, for, for the six days of the week before I went and did it, right? So that would kind of equilibrate things. Now, is it exactly work like that? I don't know. You know, when you get into that extreme level yeah. of calorie cycling, who knows? Because there is there is something there is some research to suggest that, like, especially people with good metabolisms, that when they overeat, they just they actually like waste a lot of it. They actually just burn off a lot of excess. In fact, anybody know somebody who's like real lean who like they eat and they stand up and they just start sweating? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I feel like I sweat a lot, even like with my coach, like. I get up to like 500 carbs sometimes That's and I, I, I don't really gain too yeah. much body weight. Do you have trouble you when you're going down? Like, do you have to adjust a lot or do you lo usually you lose on a good amount of calories? Uh, I, I don't what, I, what I mean is do you tend to stagnate quite a bit when you're dropping? Like, um, do you have to make a lot of adjustments like every couple weeks? No, not really. Okay, well then he just has a good metabolism. Yeah. Even though I, I like cutting and I, I have like 380 carbs. Like, yeah. Can you see the right I don't now? really. Yeah. I don't really talk about it. <laughs> but I am sweating right now, even just sitting here. I don't know if that's normal. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of that's like you know, they, they people who are tend to be very lean, faster metabolisms. If they overeat, they burn off a higher proportion as waste as heat. They dissipate. They're better at dissipating excessive energy than people who tend to be more overweight. People who are more overweight are better at storing, right? You know when you get a huge meal and you're just getting like the meat sweats or you're just yeah. sweating when you go to bed? Yeah. It's an ingrained part of our society at this point. Average dieter makes four to five attempts per year. That's like every couple, well how long is the diet, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you just like go walk, walk and like get up in the morning, trip into a bowl of Skittles and oh, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Americans spent 65 million trying to lose weight in 2012. That million is actually a billion. 105 million and 65. That don't make no sense. But it's, uh, 75 cents a diet. <laughs> you know, no wonder it's four or five attempts per year. <laughs> What's interesting is that okay. Well, then why do we have a why do we have a weight problem, right? Six out of every seven people who are overweight or obese will lose a significant amount of weight during their lifetime. That's, 10, that's 10, over 10% of whatever body weight they have. By the way, even if you're overweight or obese, if you lose 10% of your body weight, you get almost all the health benefits of weight loss in the first 10%. The, the way in which you diet matters. Like the time frames and how you regain it matters. If you regain, like, you can regain weight, but if you regain it slowly and mostly lean body mass in the right proportion, you can still lose weight again, okay? But if you keep regaining it inappropriately, because you know, like, that we actually have statistics on this. Even if you do all the right things, you lose lean body mass when you diet that. Now, if you go on a really bad diet or crash diet, you can lose up to 50% or more lean body mass when you diet. Okay? Well, when you gain it back, at least in the first couple months, it's almost all body fat. So think about people who, what is the normal person do? They, they try a diet for a few weeks, they lose a few kilos, and then they gain it all back. And they try a diet for a few weeks, and then they, try, and then they gain it all back, right? What's happening every time they're losing lean body mass and putting body fat back on? My dad lost 30 pounds on a ketogenic diet and put on 50. He was better off before he lost 30. Energy intake after 100% weight recovery, meaning, uh, so after they, they got back to their original weight, so they lost it and then came back up to the original weight, were they still consuming more calories than they did beforehand? So people post diet are typically hyperphagic. Who's done the contest and knows this? Like, but now I don't even like candy. I'm just like, I have candy down to the lines and sniffing off the table. Meat goes down. Meat is actually very long. Increase your metabolic rate 
by decreasing the efficiency of ATP production. ATP is basically the energy currency of your cell, okay? The way you make ATP is by creating what's called a hydrogen ion gradient across the mitochondrial membrane. Anybody in here who didn't have had biology, like, well, what, the, what did you say? WTF? Um, but basically what it does is it, it, it makes that membrane leaky, reduces that gradient, and makes it harder for the body to produce ATP, okay? So essentially, you're wasting energy, all right? You're getting rid of energy. Leptin kind of controls your body fat set point. If you, if you start to, you guys probably notice like you can eat a lot, but your body kind of tries to keep you from getting too big for the most part. You really have to eat through your hunger signals because if you get to a certain level of body fat, you may go on the, like a dreamer bulk, you get to a certain level of body fat and your body's just like, mm-mm. Like you're not hungry, you feel nasty all the time, you're sluggish, you're slow, you don't want to eat, you want to look at food. That's that leptin coming up. Right? So as your fat cells expand, they secrete more leptin, trying to keep you from getting too fat. As you lose fat, they shrink, you secrete less leptin, trying to keep you from getting too lean and go into much of a deficit. So they pair fed uh, people who had either been dieting versus people who had not been dieting the same uh, caloric density of a meal and look at how much was wasted as heat. And people who had been dieting wasted way less, okay? which makes sense from a teleological evolutionary perspective. If you've been starving, and dieting is just controlled starvation, if you've been starving, it would make sense that when you came across a source of food, you would not want to waste hardly anything. Because you're doing it so quickly, your metabolic rate doesn't have time to catch up to the calories you're consuming, right? But if you go slow, you're gonna have less body fat gain. It's gonna give your metabolism time to come back up in sync with those calories. And you have just whatever the hell you want post-diet, right? And your body fat goes up very quickly, right? That green line. What, but your metabolic rate still hasn't caught up, right? It's gonna be more sluggish coming back. And then what happens with most people? They don't like getting all that body fat back and they go, okay, well, I'm just gonna go back on that diet I was on. How many of you guys have had that experience where you like regain body fat, try to go back and diet again and it just doesn't work as well? Anybody had that experience? Yeah, a lot of people had that experience. All right. What the hell? Like, it just worked. So, part of that is because your metabolic rate just isn't caught back up. First off, we don't starve ourselves during the diet. Right? Take a little bit longer, go a little bit slower, retain more lean body mass, retain more metabolic rate. Then when we're done, we slowly increase calorie intake so that we only regain a minimal amount of body fat and get our metabolic rate back up. So, where to start on a, on a reverse diet? So, I remember like an example of this is Lauren, a long time ago. After one of her preps, she was like, I, I know, you know, we want to keep body fat, but I'm just tired of feeling like shit. Can I just add more calories? So, okay, what's the, so usually what I'll do in that case, what is the minimum amount of calories I can take you up to and you feel like you could be adhering to, right? So we came up with a number and we worked with that. So 10 to 30% is not a set in stone number. That's just typically what I use, okay? And then I'll add two to 10 percent uh, calories per week from carbohydrate and fat. People say, why did you raise protein? Well, because as you raise calories, your protein requirements actually go down. Calories are protein sparing. Okay? Now, if you get to the point where you're like a macro monster, or a macronator, what we call it, uh, where you're eating like super high amounts of macros to maintain your body weight, then you know, maybe you take your protein up just to keep things in a little bit better balance. Right? Like I, I've had people up to six, 700 grams of carbs a day. You know, that we're eating 180 grams of protein because it was like two and a half grams per kilogram of lean body mass. And at that point, it's kind of like, well, it's hard. They are having trouble keeping their protein that low. You know what I mean? So we raise their protein just to make them basically have better adherence. I binge ate after every single one of my shows, except one. The last time I competed. And the only difference was this time I actually had a plan when I was going out. I didn't say, okay, I'm going to hit these macros. I'm going to make sure that I, no, 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 no. I was like, I'm going to allow myself to eat what I want. I'm going to eat until I feel physically full, but then I'm going to stop. And y'all know that there's a difference between like feeling physically full versus like the drive and compulsion to eat. You guys know the difference between that? So I was just like, I'm going to pay attention to my satiety signals, what my gut feel actually feels like, right? I would like, you guys ever had that like deep dish Chicago stop? I'm talking not like the, not like the Pizza Hut stop, but like the, do you have maybe the Giordano's? Giordano's? Yeah, Giordano's. We're talking. That thing. Like, it's like 25 grams of fat per slice. Oh, wow. 
It's a, like a literal pizza pie. It's like a warm coat of goodness. <laughs> I had two slices of deep dish Chicago style pizza. I had a Corona and I had a little bit of something else and I felt full and I stopped. Now trust me, I could have kept eating because my brain was like, go, 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 go. That was the arc nucleus going to CCK. Um, but I stopped, went, went back to my hotel, went to bed, I had a little bit like beef jerky or something before bed just to make me feel full again. And I went to bed and I woke up and I only gained like half a pound. And it put me in a good mental spot to then start my reverse. Because what happens is most people go out, they eat whatever the hell they want, they wake up the next day and feel bloated, feel gross. They're like, well, I'm just going to diet for a day and tomorrow I'll get myself to go back down. And then what happens? They end that mini diet, and then they do the same shit, and then they got to diet again, and they do the same shit again, and it's like, where is the finish line? Let me come down and then re ha, I can't ha 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 ha. <laughs> Oh my god. She's still pretty low calories over here, right? This is over the course of three years. But look at the difference. Now, she's still pretty low calories over here, but it ain't like over here, right? Like, that's actually semi manageable. That shit was nuts. I'm like, what do you eat? Grass? <laughs> when to stop a reverse, like as a coach, when a client might just say it might be in their head and you know maybe you should push a little harder, or like when do you know when's a good time to reverse? To stop, to stop it? Sorry, okay. Yeah. Uh, if they've, the way, it's kind of like the pornography response, I know it when I see it. Uh, <laughs> but I would say for the most part, when they're maintaining their body weight on a normal or more than normal amount of calories, right? That's when I get happy as a coach. Okay, when I know I'm not gonna have to, probably not have to crush them to get them, you know, to wherever they want to go body fat wise. Um, now, if they're at a point where they're comfortable body fat wise, okay? and they're comfortable with what they're eating. Like, I have this with a gal, you've seen my client, Christy. She's a badass, she's like 55 years old. Her, her Instagram is uh, ready in five weeks. Check her out. Um, she's gonna get like 20 followers tonight. I don't know what the heck happened. Um, but she's like 55 and like super lean. And she's on 300 grams of carbs a day and like, like uh, 90 grams of fat. And like, she came to me when she started working, she was like uh, 1,500 calories, it's pretty wild. But, like I said to her, she doesn't really have any contest goals that she wants to do right now. And she's happy with what she's eating. She's happy with how lean she is. And I'm like, well, like, we don't, we don't have to keep increasing. I'm like, are you happy where you're at? Do you want to just kind of maintain for a while? She's like, yeah. So we just maintain. So it just depends. It also depends on what the goals are. You know, if somebody really, you know, really wants to be able to do a prep, but their calories are still low, I mean, they might have gained a little bit of weight, but I'm still going to push them to keep doing that reverse because we got to we got to get them to back to a place where they're going to prep, you know. So a lot of it's just it's so client specific, right? And that's why there is no one size fits all for for reversing or anything in nutrition. It's just kind of looking at their goals and looking at what makes the most sense at the time. Thank you guys. Uh, we really appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Our first uh, camp seminar of the year. Um, <laughs> Also, if you've never seen Dr. Bill Campbell speak, he's awesome. It'd definitely be good.